Why does it seem so complicated to make? So what's going on in the farmhouse kitchen today, Maureen? Sourdough bread. Well, actually, sourdough starter. We all love sourdough bread. It has been kind of the hip chick groovy thing to do to make your own sourdough bread. But if you're anything like me and you were a jazz and blues singer before, uh, bacon sourdough bread. <sighs> sourdough bread is one of the first breads that were, was ever made. It's only been in the last few hundred years that the yeast breads have come in. Sourdough bread was a staple for everybody. Then why does it seem so complicated to make? When I first started looking up how to make sourdough bread, I would read how to make the starter, how to feed the starter, the discard, and all these different things. And it was just like, it's way too complicated for my simple brain. I watched a few videos on how to do it, and then it was like, oh, now it makes more sense. So I wanna to talk to you about the initial starter and the discard, that whole procedure, because that, again, gets very confusing to people. Is why the discard, why the feeding it? And it's, it's like, I don't understand. So I wanna take you through that process. But before we get started, let's just get one thing very clear. This is my opinion and my experience. It has nothing to do with the technical science aspect of it. I'm just doing it how I think my grandma would have done it. With your sourdough starter, you can read instructions on how to start your own starter, but truth be told, uh, I could never make it work. So this is a 27 year old starter that came from bakery. I have learned how to dehydrate it and rehydrate it so that it can be sent in the mail and things like that. I like to store mine in an old spaghetti sauce jar. And now here's the thing, I don't store mine on the counter. I bake bread once a week and I store mine in the refrigerator. And that way I don't have to feed it every single day. My starters get fed once a week. Unless I'm doing more things, then I'm going to feed it again. So I keep mine in this jar for just making my regular sourdough bread because it's just a small amount. We don't want too much uh, because it just is going to continue to expand. When I'm doing something like my cinnamon sourdough bread, I have this one because it does take quite a bit more sourdough starter to make the breads. Okay, we're gonna have another little sit down chit chat here. And one of the reasons why we want to feed it is because we want to keep the microbes active. Within the course of time, the microbes are going to start to die off. So you keep adding in the protein. So they're feeding on your high protein bread flour. So when you are needing to feed your sourdough starter, the main thing is, is that you don't want it to continue to grow where you have to keep adding it into another container. You wanna keep it contained. So that's one of the reasons for the discard. So the best way that I can explain it is that if we started with 50 grams of flour, 50 grams of sourdough starter, and 50 grams of water, we mix it all together, it expands. So now let's just say that now we have 100 grams of sourdough starter. Now to feed that, we are actually going to have to put in another 100 grams, 100 grams of flour, 100 grams of water. Mix it all up, what do we got? Now we've got 200 grams of sourdough starter and it just keeps going on and on and on. So that's one of the reasons for the discard because the discard is going to help us to keep it small. So I do have some times where I remove quite a bit of sourdough starter and make something like my sourdough crumpets or sourdough crackers or sourdough fried bread. When I'm doing my weekly baking, what I end up removing from here, which would be the discard, is actually going to be the base for my lavab. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. I do use a recipe. I follow Joshua Weissman's advanced sourdough bread. What I've done here is I've actually typed it out. So the original recipe, you know, it, it does for two loaves, but there are times where I'm making four or six and so that I don't have to math, I have it all in here. And yes, I do follow the grams because again, I'm not an experienced baker, so I don't know necessarily what the feel is, what you know the hydration should be. I have no idea of that. So I just follow this. Everything is weighed out on my scale. But I'm thinking one day I might be able to actually do it without the scale and just be able to do it all by feel. Mm. I know that you're sideways, so hopefully this is all gonna work out. But I first start with my bowl and tear it to zero. Then I'm going to take 35 grams of sourdough starter. So then I just watch it, then we tear it, and now we're gonna add 35 grams of 
high protein bread flour. Pair it again and add 35 grams of whole wheat flour. I went a little bit. Then we tear it up again and we're going to add 70 grams of warm water. So we just let that drizzle in slowly. Then it went over. So I'm just going to remove a little bit of our water. Now for me, it was important that I removed the water because I live in a very humid climate. I need to make sure I'm keeping control of the moisture that's going on in the bread. So that's why I had to remove it. Lastly, we're just gonna stir all that up. I place it in the oven with the light on for the next five hours. I make the Levan the night before, so mine stays in the oven much longer than five hours and everything comes up just fine. So next, I need to feed this sourdough starter. Now, I didn't take out very much of the starter, so I might just take out some and make some fried bread with it. So what I wanna show you now is how I'm gonna feed it. So I've removed some more. I'm going to tear my scale and then I'm going to take my flour. For this one, I'm just gonna add in another 50 grams into it. So it's like maybe three good scoops. There's 53. I'm going to tear it and I'm going to add 50 grams of water. And then we're going to stir it up. Then I go through and I scrape down the side so that I can see where my level is. I'm going to move the elastic up to that level and then we're going to put a lid on it loosely and also stick it in the oven and it's going to sit overnight. I'm going to see lots of bubbles and the beautiful growth. It's only been a little bit of time and you can already see the growth on the sourdough starter that's happening. Yee. So just to recap, we feed the sourdough starter to keep it active and keep the microbes alive and you discard because you don't want it to grow exponentially. I'm gonna leave Joshua Weissman's recipe for the sourdough bread that I make. There are many, many different recipes and you can do whatever kind you want. I really, really like this one in particular. And if you have any questions in regards to the starter, don't hesitate to just put them down in the comments and ask them and I'll do my best to try to answer them for you. And so that's what we did today. Simplifying sourdough starter. I hope you're having a great day wherever you are and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Take care, God bless.